Hello, welcome back to Software Dude. Load balancing is a critical aspect of modern networked application, right? Uh, ensuring high availability, re reliability, uh, performance, right? Load balancers distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers, right? Essentially optimizing the resource utilization and also uh, preventing any single server from becoming a bottleneck, right? There are two primary types of load balancers based on the OSI model layers. Um, which are known as the layer 4 load balancer and the layer 7 load balancer, right? Layer 4 is also called the transport layer and layer 7 is also called the application layer, load balancers. So each type of load balancer has its uh, strengths, weaknesses and the choice between uh, them involves various trade-offs, right? And that is what we are going to look at today. We are going to look at the system design trade-offs between layer 4 and layer 7 load balancers. So let's start with layer 4 load balancing. Layer 4 load balancer operates at the transport layer, right? It handles traffic based on IP address uh, and uh, TCP, UDP ports, right? They're also known as uh, network load balancers, like we mentioned. Some of the use cases for uh, layer 4 load balancers are they are ideal for applications with high throughput and low latency requirements, right? Uh, they're suitable for simple load balancing scenarios where traffic can be distributed based on IP, right? And uh, IP and port uh, without inspecting the content of the message that is being delivered, right? And then uh, it's primarily used in non-HTTPS traffic or internal network load balancing, right? Which is not public facing. Now let's look at layer seven load balancers. Layer seven load balancers operate at the application layer, uh, which is, it handles traffic based on the content of the message, right? The data, the request headers. So, which is why they are also called the application load balancers. Some of the use case for layer seven load balancers are, they are best for web applications and services where routing decisions need to be based, uh, need to be made based on HTTP content, right? I mean, the, the content, the header, the actual data, the message of the, of the request, right? Suitable for applications uh, requiring advanced security features and uh, comprehensive health checks, right? Not at the surface level. And then it is useful in scenarios where a user session, uh, session require, needs to be persisted, right? SSL offloading are necessary, right? So those kind of scenarios are more deep uh, and more comprehensive in terms of security, flexibility, and in terms of more, uh, more flexibility that it provides to the application in terms of load balancing. Uh, so, which is where layer 7 load balancers are useful. So, now let's look at the trade-offs between layer 4 and layer 7 load balancers, right? So, to start with, let's start with performance. Layer 4 load balancer is high performance, low latency. Layer 7 is higher latency due to uh, the deep packet inspections that they have to do, right? Because it is based on the content of the message and of the data. So, which is why you have to uh, have to look at the packet, you have to look at the request, you have to inspect and then they are based on decisions that are based on the data. So, which is more, it requires more latency, right? Then resource usage, uh, usage for layer 4 is low CPU and uh, memory usage. Layer 7 requires high CPU and memory usage because of the same reason because it is looking at uh, the data and the content of the message. Complexity, because of that layer 4 is simple to configure and manage, layer 7 is more complex to configure and manage, right? Routing capability. We discuss routing for layer four is based on IP and post uh, port based routing, uh, but layer seven is content based routing, right? Uh, like URLs, headers, cookies, message, data. So the routing is based on that, right? So if you take an example, say you want to route uh, a regional request, right, to a load balancer which is deployed, say, in Spain. Right? So that the message or the, the, the data in that message will be inspected to look at where the request is originating from or uh, also the content of the message where it wants to go depending on a tenant based uh, routing, right? So that is where layer 7 is more, in, uh, more uh, content based and layer 4 is uh, IP based, I mean just detecting based on the IP and the port where uh, the request uh, came from. Security, uh, layer 4 is limited, uh, but layer 7 is enhanced uh, level security. Uh, health checks, uh, because, yeah, I mean, in layer 4, it is uh, it is limited 
application level security right so which is where you you in your health checks are also very basic tcp udp checks right uh, but layer 7 it is more comprehensive application health monitoring right it's not just health checks or just pings uh, so to speak but it is also uh, more comprehensive in terms of the health monitoring of the system of the service of the of the data that is being received not received so the monitoring layer is more more uh, stringent and more comprehensive in terms of layer 7 uh, load balancing scalability uh, layer 4 is highly scalable uh, because it operates on stateless uh, operations uh, because uh, it does not need to store any kind of uh, stateful uh, you know data which layer 7 has to do uh, like for example sticky sessions right so layer 7 has to deal with those kind of stateful features so which is why it is uh, it is scalable but with stateful features uh, next is flexibility layer 4 is limited flexibility layer 7 is highly flexible because of uh, layer 4 only the the uh, load balancing is very limited in terms of uh, the uh, the ip and port based routing that it can do but layer 7 it can it can do much more right not only it is application based routing but also it can uh, do ssl termination caching compre uh, compression right so those kind of use cases make it more flexible as a as a load balancing capability and then another aspect of security is ddos mitigations right in terms of uh, denial of service uh, layer 4 is very basic because you are only dependent on the ip or the port but layer 7 it is more advanced because you can have more uh, guardrails in place uh, for for mitigating any kind of ddos attacks right uh, based on content based on data metadata so which is where it makes it more advanced in terms of uh, ddos protection right so load balancing i i also have mentioned different types of load balancers and also uh, how load balancers operate how do you balance load if you are designing a system which requires a load balancer in between uh, not only how do you design a load balancer but also how do you design a system uh, which requires load balancing capabilities right uh, whenever you are de uh, designing a system which is distributed globally available uh, you will require load balancing capabilities if you want it to uh, be scalable right uh, your application to be scalable mm, so in those kind of situations uh, load balancing is very important I, I already have made a video on load balancing in details I'll, I'll link that in the description of this video but also when you are actually designing you want to be sure about the trade-offs between different layers of load balancers uh, layer 4 and layer 7 are the typically two most used uh, load balancers uh, in terms of in, in distributed applications uh, because one is based on the transport and one is based on the application layer choosing between the layer 4 and layer 7 load balancer involves um, evaluating the specific requirements of your application which can be performance security right complexity scalability like we, we spoke about almost an eight or nine different trade-offs right it can be based on anything depending on how your situation is how your system needs are load layer 4 load balancers offer simplicity high performance but lack advanced features and uh, content awareness right uh, whereas la layer 7 load balancers provide great flexibility security advanced routing capabilities but at the cost of increased complexity and resource usage, uh, usage. complexity is not just in terms of implementation of in terms of configuration but also complexity in terms of maintenance you have to understand that you have to it's not just about designing or building but you also have to operate that system for a long period of time right so the decision should align with your application needs and the and the trade-offs that you are willing to accept right so that is uh, system design trade-offs between layer 4 and layer 7 load balancers hopefully this was useful thanks for watching